Hot 97, I'm Nessa, and of course, Lil C's, thank you so much for coming through. Uh, no doubt, no doubt. And it's hanging out with us. Of course. I appreciate it. Definitely, it means a lot to me. Definitely, thank you. It means thank a lot to me. all the hip hop fans and fans in general, you know, yes, just sir. to see someone who's part of such a big legacy. Now, it's been 18 mm -hmm. years since Big has passed yes. away. Yeah. So, how, what do you do to remember him uh, on a day like this? Music. Music. Yeah. Kick it, you know, talk to my close friends, you know, uh, you know, reach out to his moms. Say what's up to his kids, you know. Yeah. That's the only thing. That's, that's the way we do it to keep it alive, you know. Or we're just hanging out with my JM dudes, you know, Mafia yeah. Cats. And we just reminisce, man. Don't you know, tell some old stories. Listen to some old, you know, some old classic B.I.G. joints. And, you know, try to get through the day, you know. Right. So, you know, when you see Diddy and, you know, Snoop come together on stage for the tip-off concert, yeah. you know, it was just like. That was one epic, of yeah. How how did you take it? Um, I mean, you know, that's what we wanted to see. You know, yeah. it, it, it was a lot of history with that whole, you know, East and West thing going on when we was really out there, like, you know, pushing the music. And it was just good to see after all these years, like, you know, we coming together, showing love. Man, at the end of the day, it's enough for everybody to go out there and get money Absolutely. And, and be successful, you know what I mean? And just to see just all that come together that day, that was special. It was something that was definitely needed. And it was cool to come from pioneers like that. You know, yeah. it wasn't like the new cats bringing it to the no. To yeah. the stage, you know, you really had some OGs that got up there that that should have did it, and, and it was dope to see. And not a lot of people knew that it was that exact same stage where the Source Awards, the situation happened twenty yep. years ago. Yep. I remember when Diddy was saying it when he called in. I was like, Oh my God! Yeah, same place. Same place. And then you look at it now, you know, him, Snoop, Dre, God, Kanye, you know what I mean? Like just all them people that touched that stage. That was definitely. Special. Did you get emotional at all? Were you like? God, I wish Big could be here to see this now. Yeah. Like, I wish Pac was around. I wish we all could have been. To see that. Yeah, of course. You definitely get the moments. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, it, yeah. it, it was definitely dope to see. But, of course. It was magical, for sure. Like, yeah. I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh, my God. Just seeing it, because I was a kid when all this happened. And to now be sitting here talking to you, this is crazy. Yeah, like, for, for sure. so many of us, <laughs> we're like, yo, this is nuts right uh, now. That's what's up. Thank and you. just to be talking to you about this, what would you say are your favorite memories with Big? Oh, uh, my best memories, um, yeah. touring. Touring, yeah. You know? What What about touring that was just... Just the, you know, the bus rides, going to these different towns and, you know... Yeah. Of course, the, you know, women and, <laughs> you know, I was young. I was yeah. only like, you know, 16, 15 years old. So, you know, I was just soaking it up as a young and I didn't really know what I was doing. And, yeah. You know, it used to be some crazy things happening, you know? Yeah. How was it with Big? Like, do you feel like he took it in well or do you think he was still trying to... You know, because the fame, the money, yeah. but you know a different side of him. Did it ever yeah. get weird for him when he was like, yo, you know, see, like, I can't believe this is happening? Or was it times yeah. he just got, un you know, maybe uncomfortable? Nah, nah. We, I mean, we always had the moments, you know, I mean, yeah. where, where you, you feel it successful. You know things change, but he always just, you know, stay humble. We didn't really, like, we didn't see it, you know. We only saw it around when one more chance started to come around. We, we just seen the arenas change. We went from 500 yeah clubs to doing theaters with two thousand people and then one more chance come out now you're in these big guard you're in the garden now you're doing these big arenas so that's yeah. when we started to realize things changing of course the money but you know we was we were still just down to earth people that's just how big was he, he stayed humble he stayed down he didn't act like that superstar that he was i don't think he knew how big he was wow no we was young we didn't yeah. you know we just we knew we was dope we knew we was popping but i don't think he knew that he was that big we didn't realize until really after he passed yeah that you you sink the love isn't that crazy you, yeah you know i was like that love wasn't there yeah. when he was here but you sink just the people like you know they really felt that pain and you know to this day you know? oh yeah for sure and you know what i love the fact that we're able to celebrate his legacy and continue to do this and i think right now is cyclical like music like the you know our generation just yeah. we've always wanted to share of how much we appreciate those memories that's right. and that's why we have to you know get the stories from you because yeah. if we don't know we can't pass it on to then our kids that's and right. our kids yeah. and that's how we keep the the culture alive that's right what are some things that maybe big shared with you in conversation like advice or anything ever and you still carry it with you today uh as far as with music he was just you know he taught me how to uh music like yeah. radio records you know how to separate this record from that kind of record and at that time i wasn't even writing rhymes he was writing my rhymes for me at that time yeah but i was always like into the music like i would sit there and i was probably i was in damn near every session that he probably ever did wow. for ready to die you know what i mean so just sitting there watch him create and, and and write and he just gave us that knowledge like yo listen we not out here trying to please just fulton street we got to make world ride records i want to go travel the world i want them to sing in big papa in london in Amsterdam and that's what that's what happened he spoke for people all over the world 
So, you know, that, that was like kind of like the best knowledge he used to give us. Like he taught us how to do the music. That's, that'll change the situation. Did anyone teach him or is this just him just being able to? I ain't never seen nobody teach him. <laughs> you know what I'm Isn't saying? That like that's all. beautiful though? Like yeah. it was meant to be. That's like just he something knew he had, it. yeah. Just a God given talent. Man. Yeah. I, I ain't, to this day, I ain't seen nobody put it down like big yet. How was it in the studio with him? Like when I hear that you were in his sessions, like for me, I'm like, what? Did he, you know, did he want certain drinks in there or <laughs> there, you know, M and M's and like nah, was it like just, a particular thing? Just weed and liquor, <laughs> 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 and uh, you know, a few ladies for some yeah. motivation and, and 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 the homies, you know, J M. You know, that's it. Was that was us? It was just always just a cool vibe, just lots of. Lots of weed. That's what I think used to spark his brain. Just I used to watch him smoke a lot of weed and come up with some of the dopest lyrics ever. You know what I mean? So it was just such just cooling and vibing, just drinking, smoking, beats really loud. Bunch of people around here sit there quiet for about two hours, no pen and pad, and just get up and go in there and lay down three verses, hooks, ad libs. No writing, full song, nothing. No writing. And young, you gotta think about it, you know, we talking about Biggie when he was twenty. Yeah. 21 years old, Isn't 19, that weird, writing yeah? ready to die. You know, he was 18, 19, everyday struggle. Me and my bitch. And, yeah. You know, he died 24, so God. he was writing all this stuff at, at that age. You know, that's just let you know how advanced and just how creative he was. You know, that's just God given talent. Everybody don't be blessed with things like that. That's you know just, I mean? you're and, gifted. That's right. No way around it. So when it comes to Junior Mafia, will there ever be a reunion, you know, and Kim and everybody together? Um,. I mean, I'm all for it. You know, yeah. when, when, when she's ready to uh, come around to it, if it's the right time situation, why not? But yeah. at the end of the day, I mean, the mafia is still the mafia to me. I, yeah. You know, I, Banger, that's my partner from Junior Mafia, yeah. day one member. You know, I still, I'm still active with all the members except yeah. for her. You know yeah. what I mean? So whenever she comes to the table and, and do it, it's like, why not? Yeah. Let's give these people what they want. You, you know, know, and I think wanting. to hear that energy from you is nice because... It's inviting. It's love. It's like, yo, it's been so many years. That's right. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I don't, I don't, I don't hold no grudges. You know. Yeah. We all go through things for certain reasons, and I think it was meant for us to separate to get our self to grow together. Yeah. yeah. On our own, and then you know, if it if it come out, if it come around to it, I'm more than open to it. Kim's family. She's yeah. been family. She's gonna always be mafia. Oh, yeah. So it's gonna always be love. Whenever she come around to talk. Yeah, we're, we're I, I hope it happens. Definitely. All of we all do. We're That's all right. like sitting here waiting, just watching and hoping. How did you deal with all the pain that came with losing big? Like you know, because there was so much east and west. Like, mm -hmm. how were you able to deal with that? Stay out of, stay away from the drama. Yeah, you know, just think positive on things. You know, you gotta just, you gotta, you gotta look, put your foot forward and just find the best way to figure it out. Type thing. You know, I just kind of just stayed away from the drama. Just proceeded to do music. Yeah, that's what I love to do. And I'm working on a special right now called uh, Arizona Ron. Okay. Yeah, it's like this little <laughs> film we all uh, put together by the character for uh, one of Biggie Records. Nice, yes. Yeah, so, you know, we're going to put that together with my partner, Mazio. And when can we expect that? Uh, When can we expect that, Mazio? <laughs> <laughs> when? When is that? May 21st. May 21st. Yeah, yeah we're going to try to put something really dope together for the people. Just to, you know, we're going to try to just, you know, make some movies out of these big stories. That yeah, you have to. Look, to. So. Yeah, it's Because that's the only way it's going to live. Yeah. You know, that's the only way we'll know, like, and understand and appreciate not just the music, but everything that came with big yeah. and you know just the impact that you guys all had on us on the culture and Definitely. really laying the foundation down for what we know as like that you know hardcore yeah. hip-hop that's right yeah what's your favorite i'm sure you got a bunch of favorite big songs yeah. but like what would you say is like your top five favorite songs that do something for you everyday struggle that's probably like my favorite big mm -hmm. record ever uh who shot you of course um juicy mm-hmm uh, That's three. You've got about two more. Ten crack commandments, and uh, man, uh, probably niggas bleed. Yeah, those those, right those are your top five. Yeah. Those you can play over. Yeah, and over I can listen to those. Yeah, <laughs> everyday struggle. I can listen to that, and that, that it feels like I can listen to that today, and I feel like I'm was. It's 97. Like, that record still sounds really good today. Yeah, oh, yeah. Better than a lot of records you All hear today. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's one record where I could hear, I could listen to that. It always sounds like a new record to me. Was big part of the actual production process, was he big on that? Or was he more like, look, I'm just going to rap, get out. That's all, yeah. Big and, was, and you uh, do what you do. Yeah. yeah, he didn't, like, really, like, work it too much like that. That's yeah. why you. That's why it's not a lot, a lot of, like, unreleased music, because he didn't. 
he just worked when it was time to work. I'm working on the album, I'm working on the album. Got it. Look, you, you see a pot catalog, like Pac has so many records because he was just hey. always in the studio. Yes. He just, that was his thing. He just loved to work. Big only worked when he needed to work. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm working on this album. I'm doing 14 songs. I'm going to give you 14 songs. <laughs> yeah, that, you know what I mean? So that's how he was. But production-wise, I mean, if he just heard a beat he liked, he just, he took it. You know, back in them days, the Hitman and D. Dot and them, they used to just make beats with, uh, takes with beats on them and just give bigger like 10 beats, and he would just, two or three out of them, he'd just write them and then go in the studio and just lay them, like before they even know he, he did it. Wow. You know what I mean? So he just to get a puff of gum, like 20 tapes with just like 100 beats, and they're gonna take like the best 10, 11 he liked, and he just wrote the songs and just put them together. So he, he wasn't like producing or nothing like that, he just liked to sit back and he just, just do his thing and, and then the they right figure beat, it out. Yeah. He gonna paint the movie on it. Wow, this is just crazy to yeah. hear like the whole process. When you were around Big, what was he listening to on his own time? We Do listened to everything. Yeah, uh, Wu Tang. You know, we used to bump the Raekwon uh, first album, Built for Cuban Links, Thirty Six Chambers, the uh, Meth album, the What album, first mm -hmm. album he did. Of course, Nas first album. Um, we used to listen to everything before that too. We Chub Rock. Uh, we yeah. listened to uh, Mama Said Knock You Out, LL album. N.W.A. Niggas for Life oh, yeah. album. Yeah, I'm a music head, so that's what we used to sit there and do it. We wasn't recording music, we was listening, listening to it. To you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like That was just something that was just 24-7 yeah. around if you just sitting around kicking it. Either we working on music or we listening to music. So Big was listening to anything. And then we just stole these two. Stylistics, Ron Wisely, the yeah. Osley Brothers, Luther. I was 15 years old listening to classic drums That's like that. crazy. Driving around the Mercedes Benz. <laughs> you know, 16 years old. Was there anyone like that big who really liked at the time? Because like I feel like now we know who so and so's favorite artist. They'll tweet about it. Yeah, right? They'll be like, Oh, definitely. I'm listening to so and so. Was there anyone during that time that big was just like, oh, like you remember him distinctively pointing out, Oh, I'm rocking with them. I like that. Old Dirty. Yeah. Yeah, Old Dirty was like one of his favorite artists. You know what I'm saying? He did a record with Old Dirty, it just didn't make the Ready to Die album. Yeah. Um, Sadat X. Yeah. He 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 loves Sadat X. Um Meth. Yeah. You see, Meth was the only one on Ready to Die. That was yeah. the only, that only, was the one, only yeah. uh, other rap on that album. Yeah. That was like, he was a fan of Meth. Like, yo, I think this dude is like one of the dopest in the business. That's so, yeah. it, like, it's so awesome so to hear So he that. wanted to work with Meth, like, yo, dog, I need you on my album. Yeah. You know what I mean? So the dad, it's like, he was real big on uh, That's big on so meth. awesome. I'm sure yeah. Meth is, uh, hopefully he sees this and is like, damn. Yeah, shout out to my boy Meth. Yeah, Get Meth, some no. butterflies. Like, yeah. that's a great feeling, like, to know that Big actually was a fan of Reached other. Reached out to you and yeah. like, yo, dog, I want you to get on this joint. You know what I'm saying? So that, that was dope.